hypnosis with real clients facing genuine issues. Brought to you by the hypnotherapist demanded by celebrities, CEOs, and even royalty, Adam Cox. These recordings took place live from Adam's clinic in London's world-famous Harley Street. So, get yourself comfortable and enjoy today's episode of The Hypnotist. Take a deep breath in, and on the out breath, just relax those eyelids and allow your eyes to completely close. And as you breathe in, just imagine you're breathing in a feeling of calm and relaxation. Breathing in that relaxation, and as you release that breath, just imagine that any tension, anxiety or stress is just leaving your body. That's right. And as you breathe in, use the power of your imagination to imagine a, a color, whatever color comes to mind, that best represents relaxation to you. So much so that as you breathe in, imagine that warm color of relaxation going in through your nose, filling your lungs, and allow your heart to do what your ha heart naturally does, and that is to distribute oxygen to every cell in your body, only this time, it's also distributing relaxation to every cell in your body now. As you breathe in that relaxation, feel it going to each part of your body where perhaps there's slightly more tension than other parts. Use the power of your imagination to imagine that that color that represents relaxation is just melting away any and all tension. So that as you exhale and breathe out, just imagine that a slightly darker color is leaving your body, representing any tension, any stress, any anxiety that doesn't need to be there anymore. Breathing in that feeling of relaxation and breathing out any tension. And I want you to use the power of your imagination to imagine a cinema. Maybe it's a cinema from your childhood, maybe a cinema that you've been to recently. Only this time I want you to imagine that the cinema is completely empty. And I'd like you to imagine that you're walking into that cinema, choosing whichever room, whichever screen is the ideal one for you. I want you to find the most comfortable chair that you can find in this cinema. Perhaps one it's, it's one of those luxury larger chairs and as you place your body into that chair, just feel your whole body sinking into that chair, feeling the weight of your arms on the armrests, feeling your legs get loose and heavy, feeling your neck just become more and more deeply relaxed with each and every breath. That's right. And I want you to become aware of your surroundings, become aware of the cinema, the size of the screen. Perhaps the darkness of the room with just a few lights so people can see where to go. But notice that you're the only one in that cinema. And I want you to imagine that you're able to just fall asleep in that chair. Imagine what it would be like to fall asleep in a cinema. And maybe you've done that before, but this time you're doing it because you're so deeply relaxed. Imagine falling asleep in that chair. And then imagine that a part of your imagination is seeing the same screen from a different perspective. Imagine that you're seeing the scene right up from the top, perhaps from the projection booth. You're able to see that screen from an entirely different perspective. And in fact, you can look down and see that conscious part of you fast asleep in that chair, in that cinema. And then I want you to notice that the 
the machine next to you is starting to whir. It's now projecting a movie onto that cinema screen. And the movie... The movie is called The Pursuit of Happiness. Perhaps you can see the title sequence. Perhaps you can see some of the credits going across the screen. What I want you to do is I want you to just fast forward to the point at which the main character, the Will Smith character, is now 100% responsible for himself and his child. And when you can see that scene, perhaps when he's picking him up from the nursery or finding a place for him to sleep, just let me know by nodding your head. And all I want you to do is imagine climbing into that Will Smith character. And from that perspective, looking at that child And I want you to get a sense of love, responsibility, an element of duty. Because perhaps the main character of Chris Gardner was aware at that point that he didn't see his father until he was 28 years old. And maybe, maybe there was a part of him that made a decision that he would be a part of his child's life. And all I want you to do is to get a sense, a sense of being able to do so much more when it comes from that place of serving other people. And maybe it's a feeling, a resource, and you can scan your body to maybe locate where that resource is. And I want you to think in terms of your life, perhaps where this resource is useful or already in play that when you do things for other people, perhaps it activates more discipline, determination, perseverance, creativity. Maybe there's more that you will do for other people simply by not wanting to let them down. I want you to locate that feeling of personal responsibility, but also a bigger feeling of responsibility that some people would call contribution, a desire to make a difference in the lives of other people. And wherever that location is, and wherever that feeling is, I want you to imagine that feeling increasing in intensity. Perhaps you can imagine it as a particular location and expanding outwards, getting bigger. If it feels like it's moving, perhaps make it move even more intensely or faster. I want you to get a sense that the resource of contribution and responsibility is increasing within you. And if you can feel that, just let me know by nodding your head. That's right. Now what I want you to do is to jump out of that character, go back into that projection booth. And I want you to imagine what it would be like to fast forward the movie perhaps to a scene where they're in a subway station where that particular time all of the shelters nearby are closed and there is nowhere for them to sleep I want you to see that main Will Smith character looking around trying to problem solve trying to figure out that if they can't sleep in a shelter and they don't want to sleep on the, sh- on the streets, that where they might be able to find a place to just sleep that night. And I want you to see that he scans around and sees a public toilet, a washroom. And I want you to imagine again climbing into that character, the Chris Gardner character played by Will Smith. So you feel like you're in that public subway, that you're walking towards that public toilet and you're looking down and there's a vulnerable child. That vulnerable child doesn't really know what's going on. And I want you to 
hear yourself. Hear yourself conjure up an adventure, a creative story. To explain that this isn't a toilet, but this is a cave. This is a place where where it's safe to hide away, to sleep. And perhaps you're creating the idea of dangers and monsters on the outside. And then shift your perspective to that of the child. And that as the child is hearing this imaginative, creative story, I want you to imagine through the child's eyes, they're seeing things not as they are, but as they're being described. They don't feel like they're walking into a public toilet. They feel like they're walking into a cave. They feel that perhaps there are dinosaurs or monsters around. And when they hear a banging of the door, they don't feel like that's a security guard trying to chuck them out. They feel like that's some kind of monster and that their father is trying to protect them. I want you to jump back into that Chris Gardner character and locate where this feeling of creativity, imagination, but also a sense of protection is coming from. And I want you to feel that that is being amplified, increased. And I want you to think about how this resource might be useful in your life. How you can tap into that infinite power of creativity and imagination. Perhaps what you could do to protect those that are vulnerable or in need within your life. To identify that when needs must, the human capacity to be industrious, creative, to solve problems is infinite and that exists within you. when you feel like you're unlocking even more than they already are these resources just let me know by nodding your head that's right I want you to now jump back out into that projection booth again seeing the movie on the screen in that cinema and then I want you to fast forward fast forward to the scene in the movie where they're playing basketball And I want you to see that you're in the Chris Gardner character, the main lead character played by Will Smith. And you're seeing a child play basketball. And you're seeing this child bounce the ball. And you're looking at the height of the child. And you're seeing him take the shots. And perhaps there's a part of you that really wants to protect. That you can see that this child perhaps wouldn't naturally be a good basketball player and become aware of that as you hear the child say that the child wants to be a champion basketball player to be the very best and identify tap into that protective instinct to help this child avoid disappointment but only from your unique perspective notice that your intention is positive and pure But then also notice that as you explain to the child that perhaps this isn't the right dream for them, notice that their face changes. It goes from enthusiasm and excitement to become deflated and almost sad. And then I want you to imagine that you're now in the body of that child processing that a dream that was really important to you doesn't seem possible because someone that you respect someone that you admire someone that you look up to has told you that this dream is not possible for you somehow that dream feels totally and utterly impossible but then as you look up at this parental figure in front of you. They start to tell you something. They tell you 
that you should never, ever let somebody tell you that you can't do something. Not even them. They explain to you, just as a child, with so many dreams and possibilities, that if you've got a dream, you have to protect it. They explain that sometimes people can't do something themselves, so then they project their insecurities and their failures onto others, and they want to tell you that you can't do it. But now they reassure you. They let you know as this child with hopes and dreams that if you want something, you've got to go and get it. And I want you to notice how you feel that suddenly that dream, that ambition is being rekindled. That what was impossible before suddenly seems like there is a light at the end of that tunnel, that there is a glimmer of hope that that dream, that that possibility is possible for you. And I want you to think, think of a dream or a goal that seems too big to ever be real. And I wonder what would happen if suddenly, suddenly you protected that dream. Suddenly, if people in the past have told you that you can't get that dream, suddenly you believe that it's possible for you. And as you believe that dream is possible for you, I want you to think about what a future would look like with you pursuing that dream and achieving that dream. And I want you to notice how good it feels to, to have a dream, but more importantly, to have the determination, the persistence to pursue that dream. The true happiness does not come from easy victories, handouts. True happiness comes from pursuing a dream even and most importantly when there is constant adversity. And I want you to realize that you have all of the resources deep within you to achieve any dream that's important to you. And I want you to feel that that resourceful state, that inner belief, that desire to protect your dream as much as a father or mother would protect their child from a trauma exists within you. And if your unconscious is willing to protect and cultivate and pursue those dreams and ambitions, let me know by nodding your head. That's right. And now I want you to zoom back out to that projection booth. And I want you to fast forward, fast forward to the part in the movie where he's now competing with perhaps a hundred other interns for a career in a stockbroker firm. And I want you to again imagine climbing into his body. Maybe you're at a desk, maybe there's a phone in front of you. And I want you to experience what it would be like to evaluate every other person around and to identify a strategy to give you an edge. Because in many environments, things are very competitive. And sometimes a bit of planning, a bit of strategy, but most importantly, a huge amount of desire can mean that time is not distributed equally and therefore there's the opportunity to exploit those windows of time that most people waste or take for granted in a way that can enable you to pursue your dream every single week people waste hours doing mindless things for no emotional intellectual or physical value and I want you to tap into that resource of being able to make the very most of your time. And I want you to do this in a way that you're spending your time based on your values and your priorities. In the movie, the reason why he had to make as much of the time that he had is because he would leave early to pick up his child from the nursery. And I want you to think, what are your priorities? And how can you 
distort time to enable you to spend more time on those things that are important and less time on those things that are frivolous or a waste. I want you to know that you have the determination, the perseverance, the ambition, the creativity and the strategy to enable you to simply simply erode those areas of your life that are wasting time and to spend much more on those areas of your life that will take you towards your true purpose. And if you feel like that resource is not only within you, but amplifying and growing, let me know by nodding your head. That's right. Now, zoom back out to that projection booth. And I want you to fast forward right to the end of the movie now. To the end of the movie where he's just about to be called in for a meeting with the board of directors. And I want you to climb into that Chris Gardner character's body just as he's called into the meeting and now you're being called into that meeting. They know how hard you've worked. They know some of the sacrifices you've had to make. They know all the obstacles that you've had to overcome. And they know that even with all of those obstacles, all of those setbacks, you've still managed to find a way to outperform everyone else. And I want you to get a sense of elation, relief, but also validation at the point where they offer you the job. And it's a strange feeling because it should be a sense of jubilation, but it doesn't feel that way. It feels, it feels different. It feels meaningful. It feels that the juice has been worth the squeeze. That it has worked out, it's paid off. And I want you to locate where that feeling is and realize that nothing feels as good as the sense of accomplishment and pride that you get from putting the work in, solving the problems and achieving a particular result. And I want you to imagine that as you walk out of that building into the street, feeling that San Franciscan sun on your face, and notice that as you walk down the street, this right here, this little part is called happiness. Locate that feeling within you, that feeling of happiness. It starts from that location and then like a spring expands outwards until every cell in your body is filled with this feeling that you call happiness. And know that happiness can be created, it can be pursued, but most of all it can be experienced. And now just experience this sensation of happiness. Because many people believe that in order to experience happiness, they have to do certain things. But I'd like to plant a seed of an idea deep in your unconscious mind. That rather than pursuing things to experience happiness, what if, going forward, you are happily pursuing things? Too many people spend their whole lives trying to create a feeling of happiness one day. But I want you to notice that the more happily that you do things, actually, the more results you create for other people, the quicker you learn for yourself. And from this point onwards, your natural tendency will be not to pursue for happiness, but to happily pursue. And if your unconscious mind accepts this suggestion, let me know by nodding your head. And now I want you to 
zoom back out into that projection booth. And I want you to retain and keep all of those good feelings, that perseverance, that dedication, that desire, that creativity. That idea of being strategic, to use time wisely based on your own priorities and values, and to have this desire to happily pursue. I want you to take all those resources from within you and then now go down into that version of you fast asleep in that chair in the cinema so that you're now synchronizing with these other parts of your unconscious mind unlocking all the resources necessary for you to pursue the very best possible life for you I want you to imagine walking out of the cinema and just realizing that this is just a dream within a dream within a dream and actually you're back there right now in your chair listening to my words feeling yourself in your own body in a few moments time I'm going to count from 1 to 10 to awaken you you will awaken feeling optimistic feeling refreshed feeling fully revitalized unlocking all the resources necessary for you to happily pursue the very best life all normal sensations will return to your arms and legs and you will awaken in the present, fully, fully wide awake, looking forward to make the most of what the next few days have to offer. Starting to count to awaken you. One, two, three, waking up. Four, five, six, more alert. Seven, eight, open your eyes, open your eyes. Nine, ten, wide awake, wide awake, wide awake. <laughs>